All right, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, hopefully you won't get no crows or sheep or anything distracting us today. Uh, there is a bit of drilling in the background though, so you never know. Uh, but we are finally getting our hands dirty with the GTI. Yeah, that lovely car over there. Um, we're doing the cam follower today. Quite an important task to be honest, especially if you got one of these older GTIs. Now the thing is we don't actually know if this particular GTI has ever had it done. Uh, quite a red flag as well considering how high mileage it is. Yeah, I will repeat the mileage for all you new viewers. Um, it's got close to 200k on the clock. Uh, 200,000 miles are called 200k because it's like a way of saying thousand in case there's any confusion there But yeah, one thing I do want to remind you like if you're new to the channel and also if you're a regular viewer and you haven't subscribed Make sure to subscribe for a lot more content to come uh, This GTI is just we're just at the start right now. We are gonna fully take it all the way up as much as I can uh, We are it's still a budget build you gotta remember but we are hopefully gonna get it doing some crazy stuff uh, Let's try and hit 50k subs by the end of Feb. It's a nice target. We're at like 47 I think by now anyway, so fairly reasonable but yeah let's try and hit that um and yeah let's get started i tell you what man even though there is a lot of space back here i'd love to have my own unit man maybe in the future if the gti project does well and you guys continue to watch i might be able to do something but yeah for now we're uh chilling in the wasteland um right so i have already lined up all the tools because you know i like keeping things neat and easy for you guys to understand so this is the replacement cam follower. I did show you guys it in the uh, previous video, if this decides to focus. All OEM bits. Uh, this is a tiny little part, as you can see. Makes all the difference though, trust me. Tools required for the job. You need a 17 millimeter open-ended spanner. Of course, you can use your um, more fancy tools if you want, but I'm trying to keep it simple here. And we also need a 13 millimeter. We also need a torque screwdriver as well, so I like to use this one. And I got my bits here, so the one you need is a 30, so I've already taken it out. So torque's 30 bit. That'll go in there. Uh, you also need a cloth as well, because uh, we are going to be dealing with the fuel pump. And there's going to be some leftover fuel that'll probably drip out, so we do want to catch that. Um, you also can use a little flat-headed screwdriver as well, because we've got to bleed the shredder valve. But what we will do, get the bonnet open. I am going to put the tripod down when we do the install, so don't worry about it being shaky or anything like that. One issue I've got right now is I've got to make sure this bonnet stays propped up because as you know, the gas strut is pretty much finished. Seems to be working now that I say it. So we've got to get rid of the engine cover first. This horrible looking thing. It is going to be going soon when I've got the intake sorted, but I am working on that. So I've already loosened this nasty looking thing here there is normally a few bolts on either side but you need to do that there is a few rubber sort of prongs that hold it in you just gotta pull it off but this one's already pretty tired so it's already pretty loose uh, what also we want to do is get rid get these clips out quite easy there's one behind as well there we go it pops i don't even need this right there we go you will have to put a bit of force on this if you've never done it before but most of you mark 5 gt owners by now the car will have had some work done by now it's quite an old car so i don't expect it to be that tough but yeah once you loosen that pull it off right so there we go that was a very graceful right, so i have got one other issue that i just wanted to highlight as well i know this every video just turns into a diagnosis video but this oil cap seems to just be chilling on the top there i don't know what the sketch of that is again get in the comments but yeah focusing on what we're going to deal with today so here's the fuel pump high pressure fuel pump drives off the camshaft now in there is a little cam follower that we got to get out and some earlier models that rubber hose is not there there's like a really annoying banjo bolt that's hard to get access to but luckily we haven't got to deal with that today so what we're dealing with is essentially this little schrader valve here i'm going to bleed that we're going to be removing these three torx bits that's of course what holds the uh, fuel pump on um, but the thing is to get to this particular one you have got to take the schrader valve off um, then also we've got one bolt back there the one that i'm touching there that's a silvery looking one uh, that's where you use a 17 mil to uh, just loosen that also you want to have your cloth ready as well because when you bleed this valve here there's going to be some residual fuel that will come out so you want to make sure you've got that right under there to catch anything and also when you take this off there will be some more too but to get started anyway what you want to do is you want to remove this little clip here i just get a flathead put it in yeah right in there it should be a clip it should just yeah there we go now what we want to do is we want to bleed this valve here like i said cap first just 
put this over there. Just bleed this first. All right, so there we go. Bit of fuel wear on my hands there. That looks like all of it. Now the thing is, this bolt here, I was having a go before. Seems to be quite tough. Maybe it's because it's never been done on this car. All right, folks, so a bit of a change of plan with the tools. So I was trying to keep it simple with the open-ended spanner, but this bolt here, the um, shredder valve is really stuck on and um, I didn't really want to keep forcing it because the thread would have gone as you can see a bit of it has chipped off still a 13 mil of course take that off slowly I'm gonna get that cloth right there because we are gonna have some leaks I'm sure all right okay all right so top connectors removed shredder valves removed I think most of the fuel has drained now we can attack the uh, torx bits because of course we've got three one two three this one here we couldn't access it before because the shredder valve was in the way it's like we always get distractions out here man it's like a construction site and crows sounds like seagulls actually today oh there they are got out a bit of wildlife in the vlogs you know what i mean but yeah it's still a very simple straightforward job to be honest it just you might have to improvise a bit if it's a bit you know rusted and old this definitely is telling me that it's probably not been changed before because of how tough that bolt was when you see the other tutorials on the internet they normally just pull that out quickly and they just quickly get a box wrench quickly unlock it but the thing is this took a fair bit of pressure man this actual valve here if you look at the threading on it it's starting to come apart and um, that's how much it was seated on there but i think it's more about the case of just using the proper tools for the job Use a ratchet like this instead of an open-ended spanner and you'll be all right. All right, so this one here. The door seems to want to go anywhere. Decide to upgrade as well to a torque screwdriver with a bit more leverage. I managed to get this one off yeah so I already loosened this one I want to do it equally though yeah there we go that's two loosened there and then loosen that one and um, we also now now that we've loosened those I want to get our 17 mil this is what the 17 mil is for hopefully you guys are still following me just want to try and crack this off all right, so that's come off a bit easier than the other ones for sure. Um, and then from what I've been told, once it's cracked off, just use your fingers to loosen that off. So like I said, because we ain't got a banjo bolt, we ain't gonna worry about anything there. We just got a rubber hose. But if you've got an earlier GTR, you probably will have that. So make sure you prepare for that. Here's a bit of a pain to take off from what I've been told. I really don't know what to expect here because we could just have some cam follow that's relatively okay or we could have something that's just completely in bits because this car has done some serious mileage and if it hasn't been done uh, that is like a miracle trust me because most people do these every 40k as precaution you know on the forums and stuff the car is standard so that probably helps with the lasting till now but if the car is mapped they um they do advise you do them a bit more frequently like every 20k miles but the parts are only 30 40 quid so if you've got a mark 5 gti or any volkswagen group car with this engine just get it done man all right yep why don't we remove that too make it a bit easier for ourselves now the moment of truth might need to wrap this it's quite seated on there all right guys so here we are fuel pumps removed uh there's a cam following there yeah um, it's a little thing sitting in there Got a fair bit of oil just on the end but what we'll do is we will just remove this to the side here all right so here it is cam follower it's a bit scored i'm not gonna lie definitely need to get that changed all right so let's have a look at the new part uh oem unit you can get it off ebay anywhere or tps wherever you prefer there's a the part number relatively simple cheap part as you can see it's got like a nice dark shade to it and that's the cam follow on one that's done nearly what nearly 200,000 miles now i don't know if that's the original one no idea because i did ask the uh, previous owner but yeah most scheduled maintenance does not include 
you know, cam followers and stuff. They don't really expect people to change them out, but Mark 5 forums, man, trust me, the place to go. Hope you guys are um, finding this useful so far. I tried to make it a bit less, you know, intense and so it's a bit more accessible to a lot of you guys because I know, me included, not really like a full on mechanic or anything, just learning as I go along. That was the whole point I got this car. But yeah, putting in the new one, what we can do is we can put some of this oil. We don't have to get some more engine oil, we can just put that on this get it all properly lubricated all right so let's put that in should just seat in there nicely well in theory right so you can have if the cam follow is completely cracked or gone you probably will have damage to the fuel pump but well, we can have a look at the end of this to get an idea doesn't look too scored or anything like that um yeah we'll see anyway um maybe it is damaged i don't know i'm still learning car seems to drive fine though so i haven't had any engine lights or anything like that we are gonna now put this back in all right so it is easier if you remove this pcv hose but i just want to skip one extra step all right so we've got that in there we've got the spring star pattern remember you don't want to over tighten stuff all right that looks like it's on yeah. not too much pressure remember So that's on. All in the tools to be fair. Probably could have done it a lot quicker. Right out of the tools, but it is what it is. This is probably where we put the black screen saying sometime later. Right, so that's tightened in theory. T30 bolts are all tightened. Now we can put these connectors back on. Top connector. And also this one. Also got the Schrader valve as well. Make sure you don't forget that. Tighten that. I know there's so many different spanners and box wrenches and whatever in this video, but they all do the same thing. 13 millers key. We've got the little cap as well. Now that all of that stuff's done, what you're gonna do is you're gonna prime the fuel system. So you don't wanna turn the car on straight away. Don't do that. You've got to turn the ignition on. Uh, do that about five times. You know, normally when you turn the ignition on, you hear that little click. So that's like the fuel system priming. Uh, do that five times. <laughs> right, folks, so there you have it. Cam follow is done. I'm not going to lie, I'm kind of gassed with myself right now. First little DIY sort of repair job we've done on GTI. And it hasn't blown up just yet. It is quite noisy because these engines are quite, they sound a bit like a diesel and idle, but there's probably still more work to be done. If you guys did enjoy it, do let me know. I can do a lot more of these um, and you're subscribed as well. Make sure you are subscribed. Um, if this goes well and the GTI carries on progressing, you never know. We might add something else to the garage, get me more variety going. But yeah, I'll just turn the car off a second quickly so I can carry and do some talking. Hopefully we will begin the detailing vid done this weekend. Uh, see what's under all of this grime the car's practically brown i know it's gray but and i guess both cars are kind of like that but yeah guys i'll uh stop rambling now and yeah i'll see you in the next video